Hey guys, Attempting to Pawn Math here. Please leave a like down below and subscribe to my channel. I'm a new channel, so any positive feedback helps. If you like my content, check out the rest of my channel and the introductory video I have linked down below. In this video, I'll be reviewing the Edgetune Pro 2 Snowboard and Ski Sharpener. Full disclosure, I received a $50 discount on the product to provide some feedback on how it works with magnet traction. Short answer is, it works great on magnet traction or grip tech if that's the type of board you have. However, it does require a slightly different setup and it's a little bit more difficult to use than on a conventional edge. This video contains a review, some how-to information on how to set up and use the Edge Tune Pro, as well as some information on how it works on magnet traction and its compatibility with a WEN rotary tool. Feel free to skip ahead to any point in the video that contains the content you are interested in. Thank you. Well, here is my review of the Edge Tune Pro 2. The Edge Tune Pro 2 is a bit pricey at $150, but you get quite a bit for that price, and it is the best product I have found for sharpening my snowboard edges. In addition to that $150, I spent $20 on a WEN rotary tool and $35 on a set of snowboard tuning vices. In total, I spent about $200 for the entire package, but some of the items will be useful for other projects. I've used normal guided hand files in the past, but I always spent way too much time using them, and I have never gotten great results. For a hand file to be effective, you need to stay on top of your edges, tuning them every time you board. You can get your board professionally tuned, but at $30 a pop, that quickly adds up. Results also vary. I can get a better wax job and edge tune if I do it myself. There are other, more expensive edge sharpening options out there than the edge tune. They look like they might perform a bit better than the edge tune pro, but they also cost about $500-$600 which is way more than I'd be willing to spend. Here's what you get in the box. The Edge Tune itself is manufactured in the USA. And the machine finish is very nice with no hard edges or corners that could ding up your board or hand. There's a pair of safety glasses, a marker, grinding compound, ski brake bands, a dressing stone, a Dremel brand diamond grinding bit and three ceramic grinding bits, which I put in the rotary tool case, so they aren't out here, and a diamond gummy stone. All of the components are high quality, but I do wish the kit came with a box to keep it all organized. I also wish there was an option to purchase the Edge Tune by itself, as I'm sure all the add ons must add quite a bit of cost, and they, they may be things you already have or decide you don't need. Setting up the edge tune is very easy. I was able to attach it to my WEN rotary tool without issues. The only difficulty that I had setting it up was ensuring that the grinding bit was at the correct, at the correct position in the collet. There is not a lot of wiggle room in where the bit must be placed in the collet of the rotary tool, and if it's not correct, it requires removing the edge tune from the rotary tool so you'd spin this, you'd spin the edge, the rotary tool out of this hole, adjusting the bit depth, putting it back together, and then checking if it's correct. This took me about three tries at first, when I first tried to set it up. Sharpening the snowboards, both magnet traction and conventional edges, was fairly easy. I was also surprised at how easy it was to avoid a major mistake. There were a few times that I misaligned the edge tune to the edge of the board and dropped the bit too quickly into the metal edge, but none of the mistakes I made were irreversible. Even though there is a learning curve to using the tool, mistakes do not come with irreversible consequences. The only gripe I really had with the edge tune was the installation and removal process for the rotary tool. Although it is easy and fairly quick, removing it in and out of this large nut you have to do it far too often while using the tool, which adds quite a bit of time to the whole process. You must install and remove the tool while initially adjusting the bit depth in the collet and the bits wear down and or burnish fairly quickly. So you must remove it and install it every time to properly dress the bit or adjust the depth after wear. The tool could be improved by creating a quick detach system to speed up this process. 
But overall, I'm very happy with the product and I don't think I'll be buying another sharpening solution. Okay, I'm gonna be showing you how to do the initial setup of the EdgeTune Pro 2 on a WEN rotary tool. It's very quick and simple. I'm gonna be doing it with the ceramic stone, which is you're gonna use for a basically your rough grind or your first grind on a rounded edge. I don't think I'm gonna be using the diamond stone at all. Uh, this is basically to polish your edge or get that really fine, sharp edge. I don't think it's necessary. I think you're probably going to round that off fairly quickly on your first couple runs. And to me, it seems like it might be a waste of time unless you're going to be racing or something. I also don't think I will be using the dressing stone, which you basically use to ensure that the, the surface is very flat and that you have a nice sharp edge on the edge of the ceramic stone, which is going to um, basically help you get a good edge on your board. All right, so I'm gonna start timing how long this takes because it's very, very quick. First step is removing the collet on the rotary tool, or actually this isn't the collet, but it's something next to the collet. Um, but it's basically this, this piece right here which will expose the threads on the rotary tool that you are going to put into the edge tune nut. Now we're going to install the grinding stone. So we're gonna hold this button on the rotary tool and unscrew the collet and slide our ceramic stone in. Now, if you look, there's no really dead stop for where you're gonna, you can put this ceramic stone. You are going to probably have to adjust this a few times because once you put it into the Edge Tune Pro, it has to be sitting basically pretty close to the, on a, on a flat line with these two nuts. Uh, if it's sitting too far out or too far in, you're not going to be able to adjust these nuts enough to match your curve on your board or skis. So I think I'll be good with about maybe the, the width of the, the stone to the end of the collet. So now we're going to tighten that collet back up, make sure that's nice and snug. And now we can screw on our Edge Tune Pro. Careful when you're doing this, especially if you have plastic threads like on this wen tool. Um, you don't want to strip those out. They're not going to be very strong. It's possible that this wen threads on here will wear out if I keep installing and taking this off. So that might be one downfall of this tool, even though it is very cheap compared to a Dremel or some of the other tools. So this looks pretty good. Um, this is basically a straight line between the three of these. I think I'll be able to adjust these enough. Yep, it looks like I'm good. So that took a total of two minutes with some extra talking. There is one other adjustment you might need to make before doing the finite adjustments on the board, which I will show you in a bit. But that might be, if you wanna change your bevel angles, you might want to adjust the, the guide bearings. Basically what you do is you'd use the Allen key in the kit, unscrew them. Right now they're set at two, which I'm gonna continue using. You could set them at three or one. Three is going to give you a more aggressive edge. Uh, it probably won't last quite as long, but it's going to be, you're probably going to be able to dig in a little bit more if you were racing or something. And one is probably going to give you a longer lasting edge. Um, you might have less grip, but it might be a little bit better for a beginner or someone who's catching a lot of edges. I really doubt it's going to make that much difference though, guys. I would probably just stick with the default settings. All right, that was it, and I will now show you how to do the finite adjustments on your board. Okay, I apologize in advance. This is not the best drawing, um, but basically this is gonna kinda tell you how to set up uh, your edge tune for various points in the board. So on a board or a set of skis, you're gonna basically have two separate radii. You're gonna have I don't know if it's concave or convex, but you're going to have one of the two and then the opposite on the contact points. Um, so you're basically going to need to adjust your castle nut um, contact points and your edge grinding contact point or your ceramic stone contact point to match those two curves. So be, you'll be using basically one setup for inside here or one setup for outside here. Uh, I may end up just using the same setup for both 
if it only ends up taking a light touch, but uh, the way this is set up, that's, you know, you're supposed to have three contact points basically pretty close. So two things that are mentioned in the edge tune guide video to setting up is you want to have a slight tilt on your grinding stone. So the leading edge is slightly cutting into the board before the rear edge. So basically you want to if you're pushing it in this direction, you want this edge to be contacting the metal and this edge to just be slightly lifted up. Now, I've obviously exaggerated that just in the, in the drawing I drew. The other thing you want is you want just a slight gap in between the front uh, contact point and the edge of the skier board. And that's gonna make it basically so that you're taking off just a slight bit of material as you run it along but if you were to sit in a spot too long or something, this contact point would then hit and you wouldn't basically ruin your edge permanently. I think that's basically what this is for. But basically, when you push this thing along your edge, you should have two contact points. You should always be resting on that back nut and then just ever so slightly, not a lot of pressure on that front edge of that grinding stone. So as you can see, you're gonna have the grinding stone lower and the contact points higher for in basically this inside radius. And then for the contact points on the border ski, which are very important, this is where you're gonna get most of your edge hold um, when you're going into a hard turn. You want your grinding stone to be a bit higher than your two contact points. So I'm gonna go set this up on the board like that. So I just took a look at my edge. Uh, and I did not put a burr on it yet. I can tell that this is rounded, so I'm not gonna get a burr right away. But I can already tell there's a couple spots where I sat, I dwelled a little bit too long. I didn't get that nice smooth ride across. And then I was also moving the, the tool back and forth, which means that uh, I wasn't getting a consistent bevel, which I definitely want to try to get. I'm trying to wrap this cord around me so it, it doesn't into my ability. Right, let's keep going. Okay. 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 So I've already messed up and burnished my stone. You can see where it's all black on one edge there. Um, looks like I'm going to have to dress it, which just will be holding the other stone flat against it until this is all flat. I probably just knocked it down onto the edge a little bit too hard, and that's what caused that. So to dress my stone, I'm going to turn the machine on and just hold this nice and flat. Basically already good, nice and easy. So not only did I just have to dress the stone, but um, but I also had to adjust the depth of my ceramic stone um, because it wasn't adjusted completely correctly. This is definitely one of the things I'm least, at least like you can't adjust this depth very easily or at all really. Well, it's hooked into the edge tune, which makes it very difficult to know how far into the call the shaft or the stone should be. Okay, so I haven't sharpened this board in probably two or three years. I've really sharpened it. I've run a hand stone down it a couple times, but it really didn't do much as far as the edge rounding. So this took a bit more work than I expected. It probably took about six passes to ten passes over the entire edge to create that bar. You can feel it with your fingers. You're seeing me touch it, that's what I was doing. But uh, the edge, the contacts at the tip and tail where you're getting most of that wear, they took quite a bit more work and it's also very difficult to use this at those points because of the curvature of the board. You can't really ride it um, the way you want to uh, and they take more work. So that's definitely a downfall of this. 
Um, however, I, I still did get a burr, and they're definitely better than they were. So I think they need a little bit more work. I'm gonna put just a, a little bit more work. This one feels pretty good. And then I'm just gonna do a couple smooth passes down the whole length to kind of even everything out. All right, so I finished up uh, with the Edge Gym Pro. Now I'm just gonna take the burr off with the Diamond Stone. Um, I actually really liked this. It, uh, I definitely have a much better edge than I have ever gotten with one of these edge guides, which is normally what I've used. And I would have had to pay 30 bucks per board and 25 per pair of skis to get this, these tuned up at the shop, which is uh, getting close to the price of that edge tune anyways. And this way I'll have a tool that I can use over and over. I'm guessing next time I'll be even faster because I won't have as much work to do and I'll just be better at using the tool. But uh, so basically when you're using this diamond stone, you want to keep it flush to the base basically and just run it along that burr. Take that off. You want to keep it flush so you're not rounding the edge that you just created. All right, and this board is all done. Now I just got to wax it. You definitely want to do this before waxing. You're going to be getting metal shavings and stuff in your wax and uh, possibly taking some of it off of it, of the wax off of your diamond stone and stuff. Just make sure you clean this thoroughly before waxing so you don't get those metal shavings in your wax. All right, on to the magnet traction board. Um, that last board took me about an hour between all the setup, videotaping, you know, messing around with a bunch of stuff. Uh, if I were to guess without the videotaping, it might have taken me half an hour to do that. Um, and that's just learning, so I'm guessing next time it will probably cut down like 15 minutes. So I just redressed the stone for the magnet traction board. If you do want to redress the stone quite often, you can kind of tell when it stops throwing as many sparks that it needs to be redressed. So because of the weird waviness of magnet traction, uh, there's other technologies called Grip Tech, I think it is, which a couple other companies have as well. You've basically got more waves up and down along the edge of the board. Um, that's going to probably be a problem for this tool. So basically what I've done to set it up is I've made sure that my back guide and my stone set the stone at the correct angle and I'm basically hike to the front post up so high that it's just completely out of the way. So while I go up and down these little valleys, it's not going to touch at all, which means I probably could mess up my edge, but as long as I use a nice, a light enough touch, it should be fine. Um, yeah, I guess here it goes. Uh, I'll just have to be a little bit more careful than I did on the other board, especially since this is my baby. I'll hopefully be taking her out on Monday. We're supposed to get uh, two, two feet of fresh. It's going to be dope. So, uh, right off the bat, definitely doing a lot of skipping and jumping. It's not moving as well, probably because I have it set so far back. I might actually try to angle the stone the other way so that I'm dragging the trailing edge of the stone across the, across the board. Um, I think I might have less skipping and there's going to be maybe, maybe less resistance going in the direction I want so I can get a smoother glide down that edge. So I'm setting the front post deep now and the back post low so that my trailing edge of my stone is now dragging. And let's see how this goes. Okay, so this has taken a while, but I can just tell this, I've been using this board quite a bit longer, so there's quite a round on this edge. So even though I feel like I'm kind of skipping, jumping around, dinging up the edge a little bit, I think in the long run it's going to be worth it because it's very rounded at the moment. So I'm going to turn the camera off, I'm going to finish up this edge, and I'll let you know how it goes, and then I'll do the other. Well, I just finished sharpening two boards, one of them a uh, standard radius board and the other one with magnet traction. The Wen tool worked with the Edge Tune Pro, which is nice because this tool is a lot cheaper than a, a normal 
Dremel. It went smoothly on both boards. Definitely a bit more work than I expected, a lot more passes, but I think it's because I have not had either of these boards professionally sharpened in quite a while, and it's actually looking like this board probably needs a base grind on the edge too. But uh, I didn't manage to ruin either of the edges, which is nice, even though I was getting a little bit careless at times. Um, it actually seems like the stone is a little bit softer than I expected. You definitely need to dress it quite a bit while using it. But overall, I'm very happy with the kit. Uh, for the, It's a little bit pricey, uh, I thought at first. But when you see what everything that comes in the box and the quality of the machining of this part, I mean, all the edges are very like smooth, there's no burrs. You know, it's a pretty nice part overall. Um, it's made in the USA as well, so that's obviously going to add some cost, and to me that's a, a nice thing. Um, now, would I recommend buying it? I think so. I think if you snowboard often enough and don't want to pay to get your stuff professionally tuned, this is probably the tool to buy. I think there are some nicer tools. But they're on the order of $500, $600. This is quite a bit cheaper than that. It's a lot faster than using a hand guide, which I've tried using in the past, and I've just basically never been able to get a nice edge with this. I was able to get a very nice edge on the board I'd use less often. This is the Magna Traction board, and I wasn't able to get as sharp of an edge, but it wasn't because of the Magna Traction. It was just because I haven't sharpened this board in such a long time, and this is my main board. I use it a lot and I use it on the ice coast, so it gets pretty torn up. Um, I mean, I, I probably used half of one of these stones. This thing wears down really fast. But overall, I like it. I would recommend buying it if you don't mind spending $150 plus the tool and plus uh, the vices if you need some vices.